Welcome to the regular City Council meeting for Tuesday evening, December 27th. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please silence your phones. Council Beauregard. Why don't you step right to the rostrum? Look at she gets her own music. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we get the chance to uh, recognize uh, remarkable individuals that make up the community. My colleague and I, um, Tom Monahan from uh, Ward Two, earlier um, this year, we were asked to speak. Um, represent, uh, because they were doing a, how would I say it, analysis of gateway cities um, under uh, the Obama administration. They asked us to speak a little bit about, answer some questions, give our opinions and feelings, beliefs and values of whatever about the city of Broughton. The reason we were selected is because it was focused on the revitalization of downtown. And we spoke about many things, the history, background, uh, the uh, community itself and the people that put a whole lot in it. But the biggest thing we focused on really was the future and the students and what they do and how remarkable our school system is. And we have two individuals tonight that demonstrate that. I wanna highlight that um, they participated in a program called AXO that um, includes academics and science and history and technology and art and they um, were with the Greater Broughton NAACP and they were one statewide. So they were represented the city in Cincinnati, Ohio this summer in July. And uh, well, they, they're here tonight and I just wanted to realize for them that um, you know, we're, we appreciate how well they represented our community and in the Midwest and um, throughout the state and um, their future. And we also want to thank the people that help out in getting these young people to be involved in all this. They're all volunteers, want to clear that up tonight. I know some family members are here, but I uh, want to highlight some people standing back there. Uh, Phyllis Ellis from the NAACP, she's one of the vice presidents, and Janet Trask is on the board of the NAACP. And Pat and Ken are here tonight, and they run this incredible science program um, through the, the schools and the Broughton Public Library System. And uh, these individuals here tonight, um, I have uh, Jalen, <coughs> Cyril, Jalen, yes. And uh, her parents are also here tonight, but I wanted to recognize her if you come up here and receive this. And it says, uh, Official citation was, be it known that the Broughton City Council hereby extends its congratulations and uh, in recognition for you representing the Greater Broughton NAACP in 2016 at the National Championship in Cincinnati, Ohio. And be it further known that the City Council extends its best wishes for continued success, which I don't doubt here, that this citation be duly signed by the President of City Council. Uh, which you see here tonight, Madam Mr. Cruz, and <laughs> attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk of city council, which is this gentleman over here, Mr. Anthony Zioli. <laughs> and uh, I want to you know, thank you for not only doing what you've done, practicing, rehearsing, and all the remarkable stuff that you put together, but representing our city and the future of this community and being such a positive part of it. And I'm sure your parents are really, ha you know, Power of you this evening, and they should be. So, congratulations. <laughs> and we also have one here for Brenton Bienvenu, which I wanted him to come up here. And this, again, demonstration of these young people that uh, get out there. And again, it said, you know, in recognition for representing the Greater Broughton NAACP AXO National Championship. And again, it says the same about representing this community. And I had a pleasure of seeing him perform um, at a fundraiser for AXO, which I hope will become a uh, annual, because we had a really great time. But not only that, it allowed people to see, you know, the talent and, and 
that the future that um, people like um, Brendan bring to the community. So again, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Council, and congratulations to both of you. Thank you for the great work you've done. Uh, Mr. Clerk, item number one. <clears throat> we have acceptance of the minutes of the December 12, 2016 City Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. We have the petition of 8060, <clears throat> 867 Pearl Street, LLC, Todd Copeland, Jr. for a garage license located at 955 Pearl Street, Brockton and City Clerk's Office, December 6, 2016. Hearing is signed for December 27, 2016. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, please step to the rostrum and state your name for the clerk. How are you doing? Uh, Jason Pappas, I'm the general manager of uh, Copeland Chevrolet, in favor. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Councillors? Councillor Ianieri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Jason. How are you? All right, good. Good. And, and I know this is just a routine because with uh, every um, new dealership, you, you get the uh, Class 1 license, and uh, you also get your uh, license that allows you to do uh, uh, the sale of um, pre-owned vehicles as well. So um, that being said, I, I just want to pass on, if you would, to, um, to Todd. I know Todd couldn't be here this evening, Todd Copeland, but... Um, I just want to uh, thank him and, and you, of course, um, for all that you're doing within the city and the investment that he's placed into the city of Brockton now with, with the, another new dealership up on Pearl Street, which will be opening, I think you and I just talked about, sometime in mid-January to at least uh, uh, mid-February anyways. And then you'd be departing from um, your Main Street uh, location where you've been uh, at, uh, at the old DeSantis building. And, and as well as you still have, you know, the Copeland Toyota. And, and some people probably aren't aware of the fact that they own the property across the street uh, as what was once Candy World as right. well. And hopefully at some point that's going to be uh, uh, progressed into something. But just, uh, just an outright thank you. And I want him to know that, that the city thanks him for keeping his investment right here in the city of Brockton. It really, really does mean a lot. So good job and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councilor. Chairman. Councilor Barnes. Uh, thank you. I, I think maybe through the chair to the chairman of the public safety, would this be another uh, petition that would come before public safety before being uh, voted on today? It's no, no this, one, this one would not. I don't do, believe it would. I don't be. believe this is. Uh, actually, if, if you could, maybe you could uh, let the council know what is the full project here that's going on um, in the public. At, you know. <clears throat> Um, we're moving our uh, 1555 Main Street location, Copeland Chevrolet, uh, to 955 Pearl Street, right off um, Route 24 uh, in Brockton. Uh, ground up facility with service and repair, and obviously uh, new, new and pre owned vehicle sales. Mr. President, if I could through you. Councilor. Um, very, Councilor, very similar to um, Bernardi with Mr. McGovern coming here. It was a simple change. That was just a change of ownership. This is just a change from one location to another location within the confines of the city. So as to chair, I wouldn't request this to go back to public safety. Okay, right. so it's different than the other ones that we've been reviewing for the same um, verbiage? This is, is Let me, those are, excuse me. Those are motor vehicle repair licenses? No, there's one here for garage. I'm looking at the one we just did last week. This is through the, through the chair. This is a garage license. This is not a motor vehicle repair license. We have on file here that uh, I don't know what you're holding up here. This is the agenda for public safety. In petition number four, actually, we're going to be hearing it today. A petition for Fong Tat and Derek Tat for a garage license located at 772 North Main Street, Brockton, Mass. It, sh it, sh it just says the same thing. It's just a different business and location uh, as this, and the rest of these were referred to public safety. So I just don't well, know I think those works. garage licenses that you're referring to right now have also applied for motor vehicle or body repair licenses as well. And that's, uh, I believe that's why they're in public safety. This is a garage license. The fire department has no objections to it. The scale for uh, parking vehicles in and out of the garage is here. We have all the necessary paperwork. Those were all motor vehicle repair. Actually, that's number 18 is a motor vehicle repair license also. along with a garage license, but the garage license didn't really need to go to public safety. Okay, but it did, and that's kind of why I'm just well, asking, why, why isn't it a uniform here, practice? Here again, Council, this is a class one license. All right, which is different from the motor vehicle repair licenses. 
This is a new car dealership, altogether different than those garages. You can certainly make about. a motion to if you have the motion to send that. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to have this particular uh, item go to public safety. Mr. President, Council. again, uh, by all means, Council can do that. I won't be serving as the chair of public safety. There will be a new chair at that time. Correct. Motion made. I don't hear a second. Uh, second. Uh, motion made. Uh, seconded. Uh, on right. the motion. On the motion. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah, it's a public hearing. You can stay seated, Councilor. I, I do understand my colleague's question because we have to be uniform and consistent and treat everyone fairly, and we don't want to make it appear as though certain people don't have to follow the same steps. But in, in this case, unlike the other uh, applicants that were referred to public safety, this is an existing business which is simply moving to another location. The other people who came in were brand new businesses who had never been licensed. And that's why we needed their hours of operation and their uh, par sufficient parking, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Excuse me. If this were a brand new business that had never been licensed and they weren't moving from point A to point B, I would wholeheartedly say that you are correct. It should go to public safety for a full vetting. But where it is, as uh, the outgoing chairman said, just a change in location, I think that's what makes a difference, uh, uh, if that helps my colleague. No, I, I, I completely understand, and I thank you. But again, through the chair, I, I think that this one actually probably should be sent to public safety, first and foremost, as they are moving, because there, there are going to be uh, differences in the size of the land, the parking requirement, all of those things I think need to be reviewed as we've done for other smaller businesses. I'm just trying to be uniform, and I mean, it's, it's gone well so far, um, and, and again, to your point, I, I don't want it to look like there's any kind of favoritism for um, any particular business for any, any real reason. And, I mean, and, and if, it's, if it's just, you know, kind of a, a, an exercise, uh, you know, situation, I, don't, I wouldn't think that Copeland would have a problem with that. I well, there is time, and, and actually your motion is not uh, to be acted on yet because we, uh, uh, the hearing's still open. So. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? If I may, I'd like to still clear a point up for you. Mm -hmm. This is a new car dealership. <clears throat> this is a license that requires the council to issue them the number of vehicles that they will park in their garage overnight. It has nothing to do with repairs whatsoever. And I understand that, Mr. Clark. It's a new car dealership. I understand that, but I'm just saying, just last week, we did the same thing for a car dealership. This is what this Mr. Tat the was there for as well. Used car is different. Is a class two used license. Used car is, so there will class be no two. used cars on this. And there, there that are no doesn't come through us. There are no stipulations for the amount of cars he can have at this new location? It does, it does not. A new car dealership exactly. generally does not come to the council other than for the garage license. Okay, I'm, I'm still going to... Other than that, it's handled through the License Commission. I'm still going to hold to the but motion when it you, comes, if it gets voted down. If you desire down, to go to with public safety, it's, you know, it's your call, but yeah. I'm just the, trying to clear up what we're dealing with here. The, the License Commission already approved the move of the Class 1 license. We were at that, that hearing just, just a couple of weeks ago. So mm -hmm. license, we have the letter from the License Board stating that the Class 1 license is approved for to be moved. So, and I, b I believe after we get our garage license, then we come back and apply for an MVR. That's correct. After the correct. fact. This is just a garage license. Mm -hmm. We already hold an MVR at our current location. This is garage, and then once we get the garage license, we come back and apply for an MVR license. You can't apply for them at the same, same time if you're not ready to move. So we're just here for the garage license at, at the moment. Correct. I understand. Well, I just think it bodes well for the council to show uniformity in how we, we behave with all businesses in the city. I understand. Um, and again, just to shun the very appearance of any kind of favoritism. Fine, just my opinion. But thank you, councilors, and thank you, sir. Just, just, just one point, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Hold on, councilor. Let me, anybody else have any questions? Uh, councilor Ianieri. Just one point, because, because I don't like the comment that we're showing favoritism because we are not. And I, think, and I think that some councilors need to sit down with the city clerk and to also sit down at the license commission, um, commissioners or with one of them and, and figure out just so they understand class one from class two and, and what it all details, because the city clerk is correct. It's a class one license. It's a brand new building facility, no different than when Bernardi came into the city six, seven years ago, no different than what 
working with Copeland, uh, opened up on, on West Chestnut Street and moved from their little spot on Main Street to West Chestnut Street. No different than what they're doing here this evening and taking this location and moving it from Main Street to West Chestnut Street. We're, we're, we're missing the point, and, and I don't want to say, and I don't want to hear the word favoritism because we're not doing that. It's a brand new spanking business with many more thousand dollars being spent, and I'm not trying to be rude, than the other businesses that go before public safety. Those are small businesses. Understand the word small to large. This is a large business. So, I mean, I'm not going to vote for it to go to public safety because I don't think it needs to go there, and I don't want to do anything that's going to hold up a business of that size or magnitude for this city. I don't think we should be doing that. So that's where I lie with it. But I think councils need to understand class one to class two and what comes with it. And then what happens afterwards when you're selling just pre-owned vehicles, $1,000 vehicles to $9,000 vehicles. Stop. Somebody needs to understand that. Thank you. Councilor, anyone else here in favor? Seeing none, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? If so, please step forward and state your name for the clerk. Seeing none, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. We now have a motion on the table to refer to public safety. All those in favor? All those opposed? The uh, question now comes on granting the license. All those in favor? All those opposed? The license is granted. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number three. Report of the Public Safety Committee for its meeting of December 19, 2016. Accepted and placed on file. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of December 19, 2016. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Executive Director of PEREC submitting the amount to be appropriated for the Brockton Retirement System for fiscal 2018, which commences July 1, 2017. Accepted and placed on Communication file. Communication from the Assistant City Auditor certifying the balance of the sale of the Montello Pool Fund is $18,808. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Superintendent of the Parks and Recreation Department requesting a transfer of $18,808 from the sale of the Montello Pool account to the Park Department Enterprise Account Park Improvement in accordance to the City Council Order of October 27, 1997, Section 3. These funds will be used for capital improvements to parkland. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Councilors, while the clerk is getting ready, I just want to let you know, uh, Councilor Studensky uh, contacted me. He is home ill this evening. Send his regards. Uh, Councilor Sullivan. President, uh, like I did before, I'm going to make a motion, uh, first of all, to take uh, collectively agenda items 10, 11, 12, 13. Second. A motion. Motion made. Second. Seconded. Uh, and then uh, after they're read, I'm going to ask and make a motion to send them back to public safety due to the fact that we still are waiting for the proper documentation that was requested probably eight weeks ago. Motion made and seconded to take, take items 10 through 13 collectively and to refer them Back to public safety. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please read the orders. Okay. <clears throat> Petition to Solid Auto Care Court for Motor Vehicle Repair, Mechanical <coughs> License, located at 967 Montello Street, Unit A and B, Brockton City Clerk's Office. Uh, <clears throat> J&B Auto Repair and Frameworks for Motor Vehicle Repair, Mechanical License, located at 967 Montello Street, Unit C and D, Brockton. Petition of uh, Bernardo and Ron Auto Repair, Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 967 Montello Street, Unit E, Brockton. Petition of the <clears throat> Roland Automotive for Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 967 Montello Street, Unit F, Brockton. These were in City Clerk's Office, June 16, 2016. The hearings were assigned for September 26, 2016. And Council on September 26, Council of Fowl, motion to refer to public safety, properly seconded. The motion carried by a hand vote. November 2nd, 2016, <clears throat> there was stipulation, hours of operations, and they were recommended to be returned to the, <clears throat> excuse me, Public Safety Committee. <coughs> motion made and seconded to refer these back to public safety. <coughs> All those in favor? <coughs> All those opposed? Refer to public safety. An appropriation of $73,037.87 from the unappropriate <coughs> estimate receipts, general fund, fiscal 2017, fiscal 2016 court judgments, $62,904.30, roof repair fund, 4309, <coughs> 
six, uh, $632.46. Fiscal 15, 911 grant fund, 3306, $3,381.43. Fiscal 2013, 911 grant fund, 3278, $6,119.68. In order to eliminate various funds or appropriation deficits, in Council, November 14, 2016, ready to refer the Council <coughs> Finance Committee. In Council, November 28, 2016, Council Rodriguez voted <coughs> to postpone next City Council meeting, properly seconded. In Council, December 12, 2016, Council of Bonds motion to postpone the next City Council meeting, properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. <coughs> the recommendation in those <coughs> committees were favorable. Count Councilor Rodriguez. Mr. Chairman, I had um, made the original request when this item first came on to get a list of uh, settlements and uh, court judgments for or against the city. And to date, we still have not received those lists. Mm -hmm. And that being said, what I'd like to do is refer this back to finance, but at the same time, put a strong word in there that we're not really playing games with this thing anymore. I mean, we're. We're council members, we come to these meetings when we need to, and when we make, when we make requests, we're not doing it for, for, for our looks, or the way we feel and the way we sound. So I think we need to somehow make it, you know, send a strong message to these departments that when these requests are made, they're made seriously on behalf of the citizens of this, com of this city. So for that, I'm gonna make a motion that second. we refer this back to city, to, to uh, finance committees. Motion made and seconded to refer back to finance. All those in favor? All those opposed, refer back to finance. We have the petition of Rob Jewelers for a <coughs> second, excuse me, <coughs> for a secondhand articles license and a precious metal license in Council November 14, 2016. Referred to the Committee on Finance, that report was unfavorable. Council Monahan. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to send this back to public safety. Second. Motion made and seconded to send this back to public safety. All those in favor? All those opposed? Refer to public safety. Petition of Gary Thompson, DBA at Automotive Repairs, Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 287 North Montello Street, Unit 3, Brockton, City Clerk's Office, October 14, 2016. Hearing is signed for November 14, 2016. And Council, November 14. <clears throat> Recommendation was favorable. Awesome. And a Parking plan was submitted 11 16 in Council November 28, 2016, hearing held, granted by a hand vote. Council of Fowl motion for reconsideration with the wish that it does repeal and was properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. Fowl motion to send to public safety, properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. Questions on granting. All those in favor? All those opposed? The license is granted. Item number 17. <clears throat> M Style Motorsports for Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 287 North Montello Street, Unit 5 and 6, and Clerk's Office, September 6, 2016. Here is signed for November 14, 2016. In City Council, November 14, 2016. Council filed a motion to send to public safety properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. Recommendation was favorable. Questions on granting. All those in favor? All those opposed? The license is granted. Number 18. Petition of Fong huh. Tat and Derek Tat for the garage license located 772 North Main Street, Brockton. And clerk's office October 6th, 2016. Here it is signed for November 14, 2016 at 8 p.m. And council November 14, 2016. Council of Fowl motion to send. Public safety properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. The recommendation is favorable. Questions on granting. All those in favor? All those opposed? The license is granted. Item number 19. Tat and Derek Tat Champion Auto Glass for Motor Vehicle Repair License at 772 North Main Street. Clerk's Office, October 6, 2016. Hearing is signed for November 14, 2016 at 8 p.m. And Council, November 14, 2016. Council of Fowl, motion to send to public safety. Properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. Recommendation of that committee was favorable. Council Fowl. Uh, Mr. President, just a housekeeping matter. When uh, the applicants were here, they indicated that that should read Champion Auto Group instead of Champion Auto Glass. Uh, and I would ask, does that take a motion or can we make an administrative change? And the clerk's office will just note that on the license. Thank you very much. 
Mr. President. Council Sullivan. In addition to uh, uh, agenda item 18, as, as well as the current one, okay, 19, uh, when Mr. Uh, Tat appeared before public safety, it was Fawn Tat, and he made it clear to us, uh, along with the business name correction, that Derek Tat, his brother, is not involved in the business in any capacity. So we just wanted to make sure that that's uh, noted as such. <clears throat> we all saw that, it? All set. Thank you. Yeah. Question, uh, those will be noted. Uh, question is on granting. All those in favor? All those opposed? License grant is granted. Item number 20. Order that the naming of Came Street also be known as McAllister Way and Council Number 12, 2016. <coughs> granted before the Standing Committee on Finance. That report is favorable as amended. Uh, question is on the amendment, which, as you recall, was to add Wayne E. In, uh, into the name. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed, the amendment carries. The question is now uh, on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Hayes Ash. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. <coughs> yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. Order the Executive Office for Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support preservation and restoration of urban parks through the Parkland Acquisition and Renovations for Communities Grant Program, 301 CMR 5. And the City of Brockton is eligible for $400,000 in grant funding, and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority has allocated $120,000 in community development block grant funds, which is the Walker Playground. In City Council, December 12, 2016, refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report is favorable as amended. Mr. President. Councilor Ianeri. If I might, Mr. President, um, at this point, I'd, I'd like to move and uh, make a motion that this be sent back to the Finance Committee and indicate to you that I have some great concerns with what is here before us. Um, still have con some concerns to even how healthy our vote was of, uh, at our last meeting when we had it in finance in regards to this whole, whole issue. And I'm also hearing that, you know, there's some final documents already in place with this $400,000 that's already been received. And that gives me great concern to, you know, um, we're voting on something this evening that says an amendment, but, you know, how do they know what our feeling uh, was in regards to this whole situation? Uh, so I'd, li I'd like to move um, and make a motion that this be sent back to the next Finance Committee meeting for some further discussion and further information to be brought to this council. Second. Mr. Um, yep. Chairman, through, through yeah, the chair. Sorry, Zach. Um, just some information to my colleagues. I have been in contact with um, our Parks Department Commissioner, Tim uh, uh, Carpenter, and uh, there's been a lot of misinformation out there, especially in the media. With this grant, um, I don't know if you remember when they were here before us last week, there will be multiple meetings, just like there has been in the past with other parks in the city. So if what we do in sending this back to uh, finance, we will lose this grant. There is a deadline to receive it, I believe, um, by the end of the month, and that's why it's on the... Um, on, it was on the agenda, so I would like to go ahead and vote on this tonight, and I hope I have the support of our colleagues because we will lose the grant, and um, I, I don't know, I don't think the state will take us seriously. Councilor Farwell. Oops, sorry. Oh, I'll, I'll defer to the senior member. <laughs> Councilor Monaghan. I'd just like to say that as we did do the same exact grant with James Edgar Park, the same process will be followed. <clears throat> Any, any changes that need to be made to this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the park will be uh, talked with the neighborhoods. They will have numerous meetings, that, and the final <coughs> end, the neighborhood will decide what is going to be in their park, what they want. So, uh, and it does have a deadline, so I think we should just move forward on this tonight. Thank you. Councilor Farwell. Uh, Mr. President and, and colleagues, uh, I reread this grant, and I, I know that some of you accuse me of being a stickler for detail. <laughs> However, uh, first I call Melissa Cryan at 617-626-1171. She is the administrator of PAC grants for the Commonwealth. She indicated, I explained to her that the council had met and that we had voted favorably, but some other questions came up. And I asked specifically, is there a problem if we go past the December 31st deadline and she said that isn't a problem. If the person here in the city who is the grant manager sends her an email indicating that the council needs a little additional time, not longer than January, to go over some items, 
that that would not be a problem, that we would not compromise our standing. Otherwise, I assure you, I would not offer these remarks. The other thing I noticed is that in the grant application, there's a question 10, are fees currently charged or proposed? If he asks, a attach a copy of the, the system. Uh, it also says that if you charge fees, residents and non-residents have to pay the same, and it's checked off no. Uh, are we really going to completely reconstruct a park and not charge for permit fees? Uh, Council, that, uh, right now we have a motion on the floor about sending it back to finance. That wouldn't be on the motion. That, uh, so. Well, I'm trying to substantiate why I think this question should be thoroughly vetted in finance. So I'm, you, I'm supporting the motion. The other thing is that if you accept the park grants, as Councilor Monaghan probably knows, uh, you have to open up the park to non-residents. So you're going to have groups coming in from outside the city. And again, I think we need some maintenance fees other than just have the city pick up that, that tab. So. The last comment I would make is there's a fairly substantial diagram in here of what was anticipated to be the park and based on the hard work of Councilor Azak and I might add Mr. Jacob Tagger and Ms. Deb Garland who contacted residents, this is going to completely change. And, and I don't think we're being unreasonable saying to the administration, show us the letter that you're sending in amending this grant in conformity with Councilor Azak and give us some idea of what it's going to look like. I mean, this is a major project. And for that reason, I don't think that we're being irresponsible by saying, let's not rush this, let's do it right, particularly where the person at the state level says that we do have some latitude in the time. <coughs> Thank you. Just, just anybody else before Council Monahan speaks again? And just, a, just a couple of questions. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Through you, Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure I understood from the Ward 3 Council. Uh, Council, did you say that, that that money has already been received by the city? As far as, as far as when I read the article in the newspaper, I mean, you, you've already received the 400000 It's already been granted. It's already been granted. No, yeah. I well, believe the money's not in. Well, that's. We have to okay, Thank you. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor through the chair. So, in some information, yes, uh, how it works with the grants is the state has already approved the grant, and then um, Tim Carpenter did go down. I believe it's either Taunton and Raynham somewhere, um, and did receive the check as well. Some other municipalities that received some of these grants, and we need to vote on this to accept the grant. Um, I honestly feel like this is being um, really taken totally out of uh, proportion. The, this is a park grant. It's for to um, redo our parks. This is what we're voting on is to accept the funds. There will, there has been community meetings from day one, from back in July about this, and there will continue to be meetings. But none of these other, I mean, that we've done this before. And if we lose this from experience, we will not get any other uh, grants from the state. Question is on uh, sending it back to finance. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, motion loses. Question is now on, uh, question is on the amendment from last week. All those in favor of the amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I'm sorry, Mr. President, can you read the amendment, please? Uh, Ms. Clerk, do you have the amendment? The amendment is there will be no adult size soccer field at Walker Playground. Signed by Councilor Azar. Anybody hear the amendment? Yes, please. So the question is on the amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment is approved. Question is now on adoption. Uh, question is on adoption as amended by roll call vote. Mr. Chairman. Councilor. Can I just ask for some clarification? If a check has already been picked up, how can we actually legally submit an amendment right. for a contract that's already been executed? Uh, the of the money constitute a, a Excuse me, Council, you don't have the floor? Sorry, sorry, Council. sorry. Uh, All right. I don't have any paperwork that's telling us that money has been in, Council. There's an order in front of us. She just said it. it the know, what I'm saying is that we are voting on an amendment. We voted on the amendment. A contract that's already been executed. How can we even amend a contract that's I don't have any paperwork telling us that this contract has been executed. The enterprise doesn't uh, carry f uh, full legal weight in this room. 
Why don't know she just Question is on yeah, adoption by a roll call vote. Ask the, the, our legal counselor, I mean, counsel for some recommendation on this particular thing, whether or not it could be done or can be done. Since the check has already been collected, according to uh, the counselor from Ward 7. No, I said the gr we received the grant. We, the grant. we were granted the grant. I don't Even know anything about the grant doesn't check. mean the money has been transferred said, in all cases. We had to rein him to pick up the check. But Supposedly, the, uh, the uh, parks commission, uh, the parks commissioner, or the uh, parks uh, superintendent, has gone to a place to pick up. Accept the grant. Uh, Accept the I grant. don't believe that's how a check the grant. through the. Uh, a check wouldn't be handed over like that, Council. Through the, through the check, saying, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. President. So, if a contract has been executed to a point where we actually have documentation in the contract, how can this body actually amend that contract? That's that's my well, that's what my question is. You're not amending the contract. You're making a condition of the grant, and the contract administrator would have to go back to the state and say we would like to change this. And as far as receiving the money, what you're doing is authorizing the expenditure of the money. Yes, but what I'm saying is that if an agreement has already been established between the city and the and the and the Commonwealth, we are now amending orders from what was submitted to us at the beginning. Now we're saying to that same body, now you've got to go back and rehash this with the Commonwealth. I don't think we can actually do that since it's already been, there's an agreement in place between the Commonwealth and the city prior to even us coming to. Uh, there is no agreement until we accept it. Yeah, but why are we amending a, an agreement that we can't do anything about it anyways to begin with? What? That's my what? question. Mr. Absolutely. President. I'm sorry. Um, Excuse me. I mean, it's up to the council if they decide to put a condition on the acceptance of the grant. Then it would be up to the administration to deal with the state on that issue. And if they can't, they'll come back and say we can't do that. And I, Mr. President, and I believe that's exactly what we did. We put the amendment that there will be the condition that there will be no adult size soccer field at Walker's Playground. That was, that's what the uh, residents there wanted. That's what we did. Our mayor was here. He stated the same thing. So that was the condition in the amendment. So right now, I mean, it's, I, I believe that all we're voting on is to receive the funds. Mr. Ch Mr. President, no one in this body wants a park built in this city or remodeled more than I do. But I just want to make sure we're doing this the right way. Because if the Commonwealth put out a grant proposal and we said we're going to build soccer fields in this particular location, now we're saying we're not going to build the soccer field in this particular location based Correct. on the amendment that we're submitting. How can we, in the eyes of the Commonwealth, justify the fact that we're taking this money that they're thinking is going towards soccer fields that we're no longer building a soccer Council, field? Council, by that amendment, once this is accepted, the grant writer will go back to the to the state the state may say we don't agree to that and we may, still may lose this money the the grant we don't have this money we're we're voting to accept a grant the state may then say your 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 uh, amendment has changed what we've decided we won't give you the the grant mm -hmm. you said from the other council lally uh if i if i might um i i believe that that what we're what we're looking for is the that what we sent to the state when we applied for the grant was not in in both the state and the city uh, you know it's it's agreed upon uh, that that was not the final proposal that's why we still have meetings with you know, if if it were if it were final if that's what the park was going to look like we wouldn't have meetings with residents after the money's uh, accepted by the city council. So that, that should be, that, that proposal should be, you know, the state should know full well that that's not guaranteed to be the end result. Thank you, council. And just one more thing on that. You have, part of the process is one year for design. So one year for the design is what basically we did and you have a whole year to decide what you want there, what the residents want there, what's going to fit. We, we, we finagled at James Edgar around different ways. So at the end of the day, you had the proposal put in. You still have a year to design. And 
That's part of the whole process. And you can decide what you want to put there, what the residents want, and that's what they're going to get. That's part of the parks grant. So thank you. Council Farwell. Yeah, I, you know, I, I apologize for belaboring this, but the, the issue is, based on the work that Councillor Azak has done, does anyone have any document that says that this grant application has been changed? We submitted a binding document to the Commonwealth of Mass signed by the Chief Executive Officer of the City, and it talked about enhanced outreach. Members of the committee spoke with representatives of city sports leagues. BRA staff went into the committee to interview different groups of minority residents who were playing sports at several parks. And they came up with a grant that indicated a youth soccer field and an adult soccer field. Now, we've extracted that adult soccer field out because, again, the residents have spoken through their ward counselor and other people. And I'm just wanna, I just want to make sure that if we adopt this tonight, Somebody doesn't come back later on and say, well, you know, you're going to have to change your order. You're going to have to rescind it because otherwise we're going to lose the $400,000 and back us into a corner. If the woman at the state said that we have time to look at this and we won't lose the grant funding, I can't see the problem with being cautious. I mean, I, mom didn't raise a fool. I'm not politically going to give away $400,000 that could be used for Walker Playground. But I'm also not going to commit myself to a course of action that I'm unsure of. Thank you. This will Mr. be the last to be yes, spoken at thank once. You. Counselor? Mr. President, so um, I, don't, I believe everybody was here at the last finance meeting when uh, the mayor stood before us and said that this will not, if there, there will be no adult size soccer field there. We started these meetings back in July, I will state that again, they were public meetings and from there I went with um, a, a few members of uh, people that had some questions regarding this grant. We went to, we have a parks um, commission, we have parks commissioners and they reviewed this, they were at these meetings. Um, I, I don't believe any of us are fools, but I believe that we should do this in the right process, accept the grant, and then move on with uh, the public meetings. This is what's been done in the past. I mean, I wasn't part of the, we, none of us were part of the grant writing process. We weren't there. This is, the people that wrote this grant, that's what they do. And um, they're all on record stating that changes can be made. So I'm not sure what we're questioning here, why this has become such a large issue, but um, I believe the people in Ward 7 deserve to have some uh, work done to the Walker's Playground. And um, a lot of it's public safety. It's not just uh, getting a new park or a new, um, they really need to have some money uh, put into the park to help with some of the public safety. So I hope my colleagues will support me on this, pass the grant, and um, I don't, just like anybody else, I don't, feel anybody wants to put something in somebody's backyard that they wouldn't want in their own. Question is on adoption as amended by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Barnes. Based on the controversy, no. <laughs> Beauregard. No. Cruz. Yes. Ionary. No. Farwell. No. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Uh, no. Sullivan. Yes. Five in favor, five against. The motion it fails, fails. And the grant is gone. Okay. Ice, item number 22. Order that the City Council authorizes the acceptance of Mass General Law Chapter 60, Section 3A, form of bill on notice, electronic format, which would permit the city to provide the option for taxpayers to receive their bills electronically and would govern how the city implements this option. In Council December 12, 2016, uh, the Standing Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. But I don't believe so. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Barnes. This is on 20, 22, Council. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolved to invite representatives from Catmobile, a low-cost spay neuter clinic currently providing services in the city to both pet owners and feral cat colonies to discuss further plans and opportunities to address this concern more thoroughly. In Council, December 12, 2016, refer the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by, by hand vote. 
All those in favor? All those opposed? It's resolved is adopted. Order that the mayor be and is hereby authorized to transfer ownership of the city-owned parcel at 19 Main Street, commonly known as First Parish Building, map 092 route 014 plot 127 that was previously declared by city council to be surplus and available for disposition to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. And council December 12, 2016, for the committee on finance, that report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 The order is adopted. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Bernard Road from Rodney Street Eastly and Northerly, a distance of about 1,566 feet. And for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and layout as a public street all way. Refer to finance and planning. Out of the common necessity, convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton, require the laying out and acceptance of Bernard Circle from Bernard Road northerly and easterly to Bernard Road at just about 605 feet. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and layout area public street all way. Refer to... Finance and planning. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Bourne Street from Winter Street Northerly, a distance of about 1,737 feet. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street all the way. Refer to finance and planning. The common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Talbot Street from Potridge Drive subtly, a distance of about 502 feet to the subtly lines of lots 172 and 183 on the following described plan. And for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and layout as a public street all the way. Refer to finance and planning. No Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Partridge Drive from Old Ash Street westerly to Emory Street, a distance of 731 feet. And for that purpose, it's necessary to take it easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away. Refer to finance and planning. Out of the pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, in accordance with the City Council Order of October 27, 1997, Section 3, City Council hereby authorizes the transfer of $18,808 from the sale of Montello Pool account to Park Department Enterprise account Park improvement. These funds are for the removal and refurbishing, which includes sandblasting and painting of the existing wrought iron fence from Keith Park and its installation at Perkins Park. Refer to finance. Mr. Mr. President. <laughs> Council Sullivan. If I could, on that agenda item number 30, um, refer to finance. Could I, through you as the president, ask that uh, the city solicitor's office give us any and all documentation, including amendments? Um, the Ward 7 Council did show me documentation tonight dated 1997, and I did speak to a former Ward 7 Councilor who uh, was pretty sure uh, that the money for the Montello Pool was specifically stated to be used in Ward 7, not just for parklands in the city of Brockton. So I think going into next, uh, the next FinCom, I'd like uh, any and all paperwork, including any amendments that may exist. I will make sure that they're on that. Uh, actually, you'll be Thank making you. sure of that, Councilor. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, on that, um, following what my colleague just requested, actually um, the, the um, balance of that account was much larger. So if we can get a rundown where that money was spent also, I'm not sure what department, if that would be the clerk's office or the law department or who would have where uh, the funds were spent mm -hmm. in the past. I believe that would be the treasurer's office. Okay, we will try to have them give an accounting of where that money has been spent since oh. 1990. Okay. Seven. Actually, I believe the original, oh. uh, uh, 97, I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, Councilors, uh, any other items before we? Uh, I, just a point of parliamentary inquiry, if I could. Council Fowell. We have certain procedures that allow for an issue to be reconsidered. Uh, I would like to ask you, how can I make sure that a message is sent to the administrator of the park grants at the Commonwealth that the council may just need a little bit more time
to re-vote on this and hopefully receive an affirmative vote. Council, just something. to let you know, I believe, uh, Mr. Gilday, correct me if I'm wrong, a council would have until noontime Thursday to file for reconsideration, and only someone who has voted in the affirmative, correct? Or someone could reconsider could tonight. If, if someone made that motion and then if they needed more time, make a motion and refer it back to finance. That, so, so if you voted in favor of it, no. anyone can ask for reconsideration side. tonight, correct? The prevailing right. side would be those who voted against. Okay, so you can make a motion. So someone who voted against would like to make a motion for reconsideration. But, Councilor Ian Erie. If I might, Mr. President, since I was the one that asked for it to go back to finance, I will make a motion for reconsideration uh, tonight and, uh, because I voted uh, against it so and send it back to Motion's finance. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration. The question is now on reconsideration, Council? Yes. Question is on reconsideration, yes. which we want. Does reconsideration uh, also On a roll call. Yes. Okay. You wrote, just so you know, Council, is that you are voting on allowing reconsideration right now, correct? Yes. So your vote right now is to allow reconsideration. So if you want this to get a chance to vote again, you want to vote yes. Azaf. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Okay. Right, now what do we want to do? A motion to read. Now if I might, Mr. President. I think now that I can I can make a motion and refer this item back to the finance uh, next finance committee meeting Second. in January. Second. Motion made and seconded to refer back to finance. All those in On the uh, motion. If on I the could. motion, Councillor. Through you, Mr. President, I would request that our colleague, uh, Mr. Farwell, uh, get some written documentation uh, from Absolutely. the woman that he spoke to. I'd like to get that in writing. That would be attached to the motion. Second. So you you want to make a motion? Uh, we have a motion on the floor, Council. We will. Motion is to go back to finance. Motion is to go back to finance. We'll we'll make a notation that we'd like okay. some written documentation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, motion is made and seconded to send back to finance. All those in favor? All those opposed? Hold your hands up, please. All those in favor? One, two, three, four. Uh, refer to finance. Councilors, uh, we will be shortly moving into uh, the council chamber, I mean the council room for caucus to elect a, uh, a new uh, city clerk, I mean, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> a new council president for next year's. Uh, I thought Tony was I, I'd like to tell you that job, I would like to just say that it's been, uh, it's been wonderful being your president this year, up until the last 20 minutes maybe. But, uh, <laughs> Come on. That's not why I said that. Uh, well, you're buying anyway. To let you know, the next, uh, fi the next uh, finance meeting will be after council. The next meeting will be January 9th as full council. Moment of which personal time we purpose. will have the uh, official election of, the, of a new council president. Okay. Just council a moment Farwell. of personal privilege. We have until December 31st for high school seniors, whatever high school they may attend here in Brockton, to submit their essay contests. Uh, submissions to uh, Officer Healy for the essay contest that's being sponsored. So hopefully we'll have some people get them in by December 31st and someone will win the $500 uh, prize. Thank and you. And where should they send those? Seven Commercial Street, Officer William Healy. Which is the police station. Yes. Thank you. We're adjourned. <laughs>